windows smashed, mm -hmm. they've had stuff stolen from them, and have, certainly people have been hurt. The majority of crimes that occur in this community of a very serious nature, that is murders, and the very serious woundings, the shootings, are more often than not are crimes committed, and I'm going to say it, by people who have no respect for themselves, have no respect for the laws of this country, have no respect for any institution in this country, mm -hmm. and they are offending against people that are like-minded. Now that is going to cause some consternation with parents and guardians and friends of people so affected. A core group of prolific offenders in this country, and yes, people are going to be annoyed that I continue to say that, but yes, I'm going to remind you, that's who it is. People that go to church, people that go about their daily business, at work, and doing the things that are right and decent in this community have no reason to fear. No one's targeting them. Mm. We have had cases where some people have been hurt who are innocent. That has happened and far too many uh, instances for comfort. But the vast majority of these matters that are reported in the press, the headlines that you carry, are cases where people that are offending against the law are offending against each other. Mm. And they've demonstrated a propensity to kill, a propensity to hurt each other, and will continue so to do, unless we take them away from society, keep them away from our people, and give them that day before a court of law. Now, while I hear you, Commissioner, and of course I agree that uh, a lot of these things, what we see, are retaliations. Uh, these things uh, because of the kind of things that are happening within uh, communities with gang banging, the rest of it, and retaliations, especially with the killings. We understand that. There is still that level of fear. Now, of course, you mentioned that uh, the people who are in church, the people who are doing their ordinary thing, who are not bothering anybody, who are minding their business and getting the job done, and not in the grasp or in the focal point, the focus point of the police. In other words, people are not in any kind of run-ins with the police. Ought to feel relatively comfortable. But do you get, Mr. Greenslade, that people are feeling comfortable along those lines? No, but I can't, Mr. McKinney. Mm -hmm. If there is a level, now this is going to be a difficult conversation to have. But let's have an honest Bahamian conversation. What do you say? I, I agree with you. This when important. we are sensational in our reporting, mm -hmm. from whatever medium, be that mouth-to-mouth -mouth verbal, with, with exaggerations, as we tell our stories to other people, as if we were present, mm -hmm. and we were not, and it sensationalized, we drive fear into the hearts of people. And so we have to be very careful with that. And I'm telling you there are days when I hear stories repeated, and I'm concerned that it's blown out of proportion. So media is at the forefront of a lot of this with the kind of way that things are sensationalized because we are the ones who basically put the information out there. And I, I know, Mr. Greenslade, that uh, certainly there's some quarters of the media that has a, a fixation on the murder count, et cetera, et cetera. And we all know as veteran journalists that that is not the way to go as far as that creates fear, that creates the kind of panic. But for somehow it also creates sensational headlines. And what I think I hear you saying is that we have got to be very responsible in media. That is precisely what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And so Mr. Kate McKinney, um, it was once said in my presence, if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. I'm not sure if that has any valid validity, but I'm telling you what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, we recognize that things are carried and across the spectrum. Now let's make sure we understand. I'm not just picking or pointing to news media Understood. or to newspaper. I'm saying in this society, we have a tendency to gossip as a people. That's where we come from, lots of us. And we have a way of embellishing stories. And if we're not careful, things are always taken out of context. Is it bad in this country now? You bet, we've got issues. But I'm saying we scare people based upon the manner in which we report some things, hmm. okay? And so when you add the emotion to it, it's all sensational, and it's always every day going to capture your top spot on the newspaper. It's always a headline story in the press. And every time you turn on your television, you're getting that story of something was stolen today or one person was robbed. But Mr. McKinney, on the same day that you're reporting that story of someone being robbed, there is a positive news story right here in the Bahamas that cameras could likewise capture. So if there's some balancing of what we do, on the same day that you're reporting 
that someone's house was broken into in the neighborhood. There are any number of police officers on foot patrol in a community, shaking hands, going door to door, and offering good advice. Hmm. So again, it, uh, it's, it's simply, I think, looking at it again and striking more of a balance. What, what, what have you done to kind of bring about that kind of harmony that you'd like to see, the relationship? I know that you have a police spokesman, and I know that they give out information to the media. Obviously, a lot of things are being missed uh, from the detection side of crime, the many wonderful things that are happening from the police perspective, and that's not being amplified in media. That's very important because that will also help to create and bring the balance that you're talking about, that we can see detection is happening, we're getting people, we're locking them up, that kind of thing. People have deduced, Commissioner, that the police are doing a fantastic job in bringing the people in. They have, they have already come to that particular um, um, conclusion, that the police are doing that. What I hear you saying is that more needs to be done. Now, where that more needs to be done so for that balance to be sh struck in the public, in the public domain, for people to understand what the police is doing, and at the same time get the news of what has happened, uh, something must happen from the police perspective. Are you doing so, anything, Absolutely. to engender the kind of um, um, output from media for instance, are you pointing them in the direction of these detections? Are you reporting those things readily, like um, you are reporting the statistics on crime or that of uh, what happened last night on the streets of New Providence? Certainly, certainly. And you know, being very cognizant of, 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 of the facts that you've just uh, espoused, we took a deliberate position, I took a deliberate position, that in our policing plan this year, we would have a distinct priority which is labeled reducing the fare of crime. It is priority number two in my policing plan for, for this year, and I fleshed out under that priority any number of initiatives that we intend to deploy to reduce this fare of crime. And so might I point first off to what we believe to be very necessary, higher visibility, that is a greater presence of patrol officers, both foot and mobile, in those communities experiencing high levels of crime. We are going to ensure that police resources are managed effectively to provide the maximum presence of police officers on foot patrol duties. And by that I mean, if there are some things that we do not have to do in an office, we prefer as a priority to put those officers on the front lines, on the streets where you can see them, hmm. and leave that paperwork alone for just a bit, or to have some other people look at it. We need to ensure the availability of the police and that the responses by the police to reports of crime meet public expectation. That's a department where we've gotten certainly some bad marks. Uh, we're going to undertake a full analysis of those crimes, which gives rise to the greatest fear within the community, in order to demonstrate that in many cases, such fear is unfounded, and that relationships between the victims and criminals are often known or established before the crimes are committed. And in essence, what I'm saying to you is, so you get a sensational report, it's a bad report of someone that dies, and mm. it's a terrible shooting incident. But it's not a stranger on stranger crime. Everybody in the community is aware of the feuding between the two persons, but never told anyone, and determined that it settled themselves. And someone now dies. The shooter is known, and the victim is known. And then, everybody um, returns to their homes and decide, it's not my business, I'm not going to get into it, I'm not testifying, and I'm not prepared to say who did what. That's a very tough situation.